Hi XR developers! If you have ever used apps like Shapes XR, Painting VR or Vermilion, you will know how great it feels to create your own paintings or sketch up your own designs in your headset. This experience just got much better with the Logitech MX Ink Pen, which is built specifically for MetaQuest and is publicly available starting this month. Today we will look at how to set up the pen, look at the sample assets provided by Logitech and then we will finally create our own drawing app. If you like this type of content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to all the source code. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our XR Developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with our own drawing app using Logitech's MX Inc. To get started, you will want to look at the GitHub page from Logitech. The link is in the description. Here, we can find a development guide. We want to download the MX Inc. Unity package that comes with the sample code for mapping the stylus input, as well as the logic for drawing and all the 3D models and prefabs for displaying the stylus in your app. Alternatively, you can also just download the whole sample project that already includes these assets. Starting with V68, Meta has introduced a new asset called Input Action Set, which is not to be confused with the Unity Input Action Maps. We can download the Input Action Set for the MX Ink stylus here. This Input Action Set contains the new OpenXR interaction profile for the Logitech Pen, so we don't have to enter any input bindings manually ourselves. Keep in mind though that this new input action set is only supported through MetaLink in V69 onwards. So don't be surprised if you are testing your drawing app and nothing is happening. Let's now open a new Unity project. We can then import the Unity package with all our assets as well as the input action set. We then make sure in the package manager that at least the MetaCore SDK version 68.0.2 or newer is installed. So we can use the new input action set. To activate the input action set we go to edit, then project settings, and then Meta XR, and under Input Actions, we add a new field and reference our input action set here. Alternatively, the guide on the Logitech page also describes how to use the legacy touch controller mappings. You can see how you can also map the Logitech stylus like a regular Meta Quest controller. So, for example, the tip can be read the same way as a thumbstick X axis. However, keep in mind that when using the legacy input mappings, we have some disadvantages here. For example, the tip comes with a dead zone of 10%. This means the stylus tip will not be as sensitive as when we use the MX Ink interaction profile that we get from the input action set. All right, let's now finally add the stylus to our scene. We can simply place it on the scene and we don't have to child it to any other hand or controller. Then we are ready to create our own stylus handler script that handles our stylus inputs. In general, the Logitech MX Ink comes with a bunch of inputs. We have a pressure sensitive tip as well as a middle button from which we can read a float value. We will later use this to determine the width of our line when we draw. Next, we have a front button and a back button from which we can read a Boolean value. We will use those for grabbing, deleting, changing color and switching between VR and pass-through. Technically, you can additionally detect a double tap on the back button, which you won't use in our app to keep the number of inputs lower. Furthermore, the stylus can play haptic feedback and on the back they have a menu button, which brings you to the MetaQuest menu. Lastly, if you have the docking station, we can technically also detect if the stylus has been docked or not. Wow, that's a lot of functionality. And with that out of the way, let's build our own input mapping script. The stylus handler class handles the stylus's pose, input values and haptic feedback while triggering events based on changes in the stylus's state. Let's start by defining three variables for controlling the haptic feedback. We can control the duration, the amplitude, which is the force of how strongly our stylus vibrates, and lastly, the threshold for triggering the haptic feedback. More on that in a second. We then declare fields for storing the stylus' state and previous input values, such as whether a button was previously pressed or if the stylus was docked. The class exposes a read only property stylus that gives access to the current state of the stylus through an instance of the stylus input struct. The stylus input struct stores various input values and state information, such as whether the stylus is active, which hand it is in, and its current pose. This struct serves as a container for the data that the stylus handler class manipulates and reacts to throughout the script. We declare this struct after the stylus handler class. Next, several events are declared, such as on front pressed, on back released, and on docked, which are triggered based on changes in the stylus input states. These events will allow us to more easily call actions from different inputs later for our drawing app. The update method updates the stylus's pose and inputs, checking for changes in button states and generating haptic feedback when necessary. The update stylus pose method determines whether the stylus is active and in which hand it is being held, 
by checking the current interaction profile of the left and right hands. It then updates the stylus position and rotation based on this information. The update stylus inputs method updates various input values, such as the pressure on the stylus tip and the states of different buttons. These values are fetched using helper methods like getActionStateFloat and getActionStateBoolean, which interface with the OVR plugin to retrieve the current state of the specific actions. The checkBooleanEvents method compares the current button and docking states with their previous values to detect changes. If a change is detected, such as a button being pressed or released, the corresponding event is triggered. The generateHapticFeedback method determines whether haptic feedback should be triggered based on the stylus' input values, such as when the tip or middle button is pressed with sufficient force. Finally, in the GenerateHapticClick method, if the value of our tip or pressure button is above the threshold we set, we generate haptic feedback using the OVR plugin to trigger vibrations in the hands holding the stylus. Alright, and with this class we can now easily detect inputs on our stylus and execute any custom logic we want. Let's now continue with our drawing script that controls the drawing, highlighting and manipulation of lines created by the stylus, leveraging Unity's line renderer component. The lines variable is a list that stores all the drawn lines, each represented as a game object containing a line renderer component. The current line holds a reference to the line renderer of the line currently being drawn, while current line width is a list that keeps track of the width of each point on the current line, which dynamically adjusts based on the stylus pressure. Max line width and min line width define a maximum and minimum width of the line, ensuring the line doesn't become too thick or too thin. The material variable stores the material applied to the line renderer, and line color specifies the default color of the line. Highlight color is used to indicate when a line is highlighted. The stylus handler holds a reference to the stylus handler class, which captures inputs from the stylus device, and tip indicator is a mesh renderer that visually represents the stylus's tip. The highlight threshold sets the distance required to highlight a line based on the stylus's proximity. The onFade toggled is a Unity event exposed in the inspector to call some additional logic later on. The script uses an enum app mode to define different interaction states such as idle, drawing, highlighted, and grabbing. The current mode tracks the current mode of the interaction, while the min distance between line points is a constant that ensures sufficient spacing between consecutive points on the line. Previous line point holds the last point added to the line, and cached color stores the original color of a highlighted line so it can be restored when the line is no longer highlighted. Highlighted line references the currently highlighted line, grab start position and grab start rotation capture the stylus's position and rotation when the user begins grabbing the line, and original line positions stores the initial positions of the points in the highlighted line for manipulation. Several methods manage the functionality of the script. Awake is setting the initial line color on the stylus and registering events listener for the stylus button presses and docking events. On destroy deregisters these event listeners when the object is destroyed. In the start new line method, a new line is created when the user starts drawing. First, a new game object is created and named line, and a line renderer component is added to this object. Next, several properties are configured. The material for the line is set to the one specified in the material variable, and the color is set to the line color. The starting and ending width of the line to min line width, ensuring the line begins with the defined thickness. The use world space property is set to true, which ensures the line positions are based on the world coordinates making it responsive to the user's movement in the scene. The alignment is set to line alignment dot view, so the line always faces the camera, making it visible from any angle. Finally, shadow settings like shadow casting mode and receive shadows are turned off, which prevents the line from casting or receiving shadows, optimizing performance. The new line is stored in the lines list and its starting point is recorded in previous line point. The add point to line method adds points to the line as the user moves the stylus. It first checks whether the distance between the current stylus position and previous point is greater than the minimum threshold min distance between line points. If so, a new point is added to the line at the current position and the line's width at that point is adjusted based on the pressure applied to the stylus. An animation curve is then used to update the line's width along its length, making it visually responsive to the user's input. In the update method, the script checks whether the user is currently drawing. If the stylus is active and the input pressure from the stylus tip or middle button exceeds zero, the user is drawing, and the script switches to the drawing mode. If a new line has not been started, it calls start new line. The stylus's current position is used to add points to the line via add points to line. 
If the user stops drawing, the current mode returns to idle. Then the try highlight method attempts to find and highlight the closest line to the stylus. It calls find closest line, which calculates the distance between the stylus and each line segment. If a line is within the highlight threshold, it is highlighted by changing its color to highlight color. If no line is close, any previously highlighted line is unhighlighted and the mode returns to idle. When the user is grabbing a line, the move highlighted line method is called to move the entire line based on the stylus's position and rotation. This method applies a transformation to all the points in the line, allowing the user to reposition the line in 3D. The script also allows the user to delete the highlighted line with the delete highlighted line method. If a line is highlighted, it is removed from the scene and from the lines list. Finally, there are several event handler methods that respond to specific actions from the stylus. Handle front pressed is called when the front button is pressed. If a line is highlighted, it allows the user to grab the line, otherwise it randomizes the drawing color and the color of the tip. Handle front released is called when the front button is released and stops the grabbing action. Handle back pressed deletes a highlighted line or toggles a pass through fade effect when no line is highlighted. Handle back released, handle docked and handle undocked manage other stylus actions but are placeholders for now. These methods allow the user to interact with lines in a simple intuitive way, combining drawing, highlighting, moving and deleting through stylus input. Let's now finally set up our scene with the two new scripts we just created. Let's add both scripts to our stylus in the scene and make the necessary references, set our desired colors and thresholds. For the pass-through fading logic we use Meta's new MR motif which shows you how to fade from pass-through to VR. You can see how to set it up in this video. Now, in our scene, we simply reference the pass-through fader logic and call the pass-through toggle method from the event that we exposed in our class. The last thing we need to do before we can use our app is to pair the stylus to our MetaQuest headset. For this, we open the Meta Horizon app on our phone and go over to our headset. Here, we click on headset settings and then on controllers. We select pair new controller and then choose pair stylus. Now, if we keep the menu and back button on the stylus pressed for about 4 seconds, it will show up in our list and we are ready to pair and use the stylus in our headset. Fantastic! Now that our app is ready and the stylus is paired, let's finally give this a try. As you can see, we can now draw and the line width will be responding to the pressure we either put on the middle button or on the tip. Also, we can grab and move a drawing, delete a drawing and fade between pass-through and VR mode. When we press the front button, we can also change the color to a random color. Alright guys, I hope you learned a lot and I'm super excited to see what you will do with the new Logitech pen. If you like this type of video, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to get access to the source code. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our XR Developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.